So if you're brand new to Articulate Storyline, or maybe you're learning how to use it for the first time, you've probably found yourself asking, what the f are scenes and slides? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'll help you understand the different ways content can be organized into scenes and slides in Storyline. Stick around. Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, as I've shared before, one of the really great things about Articulate Storyline is how similar it is to using PowerPoint. And while these similarities certainly make it that much more intuitive and easy to get up and running, the truth is Articulate Storyline is like PowerPoint on steroids. I mean, between the use of triggers and variables, slide layers, and the timeline, it offers a ton of options for creating awesome e-learning courses. And, you know, one of these features includes how you can organize your content into scenes and slides. So let me show you how. All right, so here I am in Articulate Storyline, and I've gone ahead and created uh, this blank project. Now, when you first create a project in Articulate Storyline, it brings us to Story View. Sometimes I refer to this as Scene View, because it's where we see all of our scenes, which I'll explain here in a moment, but it's technically called Story View, and I know that because we have the Story View tab uh, up here. And this is, again, where we can see a high-level overview of all of the slides in our project. Now, when you create a new project, Storyline automatically gives us a single blank slide contained within a single scene, all right? And you might be thinking, well, like you know, during the opener, what the heck are scenes and slides? Well, you know, slides and storyline are just like slides in PowerPoint. They're slides, pretty easy peasy. But one of the cool things that you can do in Articulate Storyline, if I go back to story view here, is that you can actually organize your slides into one or more scenes. And, you know, the best way to define what scenes and slides are is to compare it to a book. You know, think of a book, right? A book has pages, multiple pages are organized into chapters. And those chapters give us, you know, a sense of meaning and structure to the book, right? And it's really no different in Articulate Storyline. Our individual slides are like pages in a book and our scenes are like chapters. So we can have multiple slides, like pages in a book, organized into a scene, which is like a chapter in a book. It helps us organize our slides in a meaningful way. Now, you know, looking at a blank project with a blank slide and a single scene isn't really all that helpful, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this project. I'm not saving it. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up an existing project so you can kind of see what it looks like with a completed project. So we'll go ahead and give this one a moment to open up here. All right, so here I am in this uh, project on a customer service philosophy for a client that I've been working with. And here's a really good example of how you have multiple slides and um, scenes organized together, right? So as we can see here, we have scene uh, one here, which is our introduction here. If I can get it to show there, give it a moment. There it is, introduction. And our introduction scene has three slides within it, slide 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. And if I go ahead and click on, let's say, slide 1.2, it opens up slide view for slide 1.2. And that's you know even represented in our numbering, right? So slide 1.1 means scene one, slide one. Scene one, slide two. Scene one, slide three, right? Uh, and we have three slides within that scene. And you can see that here on the thumbnails here on the left-hand side. Now, if I wanna to go to say, let's say scene two, I'll go back to story view and I can scroll down here and here is scene number two, which contains five slides, right? For our Webisia customer service philosophy. And it's the same thing, right? And in this instance, you know, you might be thinking, well, this doesn't seem like a meaningful use of scenes and storyline, but it is meaningful because it helps me organize my content in a meaningful way. And, you know, the scene and slide structure isn't just for me as a developer. The scene and slide structure and how we have it organized also helps the learner. Let me give you an example. Let's say if I wanted to preview this project, I'll go ahead and preview the entire project here. Give it a moment. All right, so I'm previewing our entire project here, and you can see the scene and slide structure represented here in the menu for the learner. So while you know organizing your content into scenes is mostly to help you as a developer, depending on how you're designing your course and how much you customize the menu, separate topic for a separate video, 
the scene and slide structure is represented in here for the learner. So it helps them navigate the course in a meaningful way. So scene one is our introduction. Those are the three slides contained within it. If I scroll down here, we have our scene two, Webestia's customer service philosophy with those five slides and so forth and so on, right? So that's a really simple example of scenes and slides in Articulate Storyline. Again, it shows the flow uh, from one slide to the next, and then it also helps us organize our content in a meaningful way. Now, before we finish up this video, one of the other cool things that scenes and slides allow us to do in Storyline is allows us to create non-linear experiences, for example, branching scenarios. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this project and I'm gonna open up this other one on consultative sales. It's for another project I've been working on to show you a non-linear structure to our uh, slides and storylines. We'll give this one a moment to open up as well. All right, so I have this other more complex project opened in Articulate Storyline, and you can see the scene and slide structure is far more complex than the last one. And this is a good example of how you can use scenes to create non-linear experiences. And as we look at this, it's almost like a high-level overview of uh, the different ways the learner can flow from one scene or slide to the next, right? So we have scene one here, which contains three slides. And on slide 1.3 here, we have this uh, menu here, which branches off to multiple different sections or modules or chapters uh, within our project, right? So if the learner clicks begin here on identifying customers' needs, where does that take us? Well, I don't know. Let's go back here and we can see here it links off to this scene here for identifying customers' needs and that contains multiple slides. And then as we come down here, you can see there's an arrow that indicates that the learner is going to go back to the main menu, right? So our scene view or our story view shows us a high level overview and it also shows us with these arrows how the learner might flow from one slide or scene to the next. So you can use your scenes depending on how you link everything together to create these non-linear experiences in storyline, whether it's a branching scenario or a menu with multiple slides branching off from there. All right, so that's a quick overview of how scenes and slides work in Articulate Storyline. What I want you to remember is that there's no right or wrong way to organize your slides into scenes. Simply think of them like chapters in a book to help you organize your slides and content in a meaningful way. Okie dokie. So as for next steps, if you want to continue learning how to use Articulate Storyline, check out the links down below for all of my Articulate Storyline resources and how-to videos. And of course, as always, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside the eLearning Designers Academy, where we focus on helping new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.